May the name of our Lord be praised both now and forevermore. Amen. Welcome you, my dear friends, to this 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Yea, today the readings present to us what I choose to, to title The Miracle of Repentance. The Miracle of Repentance. Repentance itself is the greatest miracle to repent, to turn from evil way to the good way. That alone is a miracle of its own because it makes not just your life to change but your status in the eyes of God to also change. That's what repentance does. What God thinks about you can change in a minute because you've decided to make some effort like it was in the case of Saul in the Bible. God saw him as somebody who was persecuting Christ. He said, why are you persecuting me? The world saw him as somebody who was a murderer. Somebody who was distorting the good news that was being spread by the early apostle. But just in a second, the life of Saul changed and he became Paul. And he began to evangelize and preach that same good news that he used to condemn. That is a miracle. That is the miracle. And that is why in today's readings, especially the first reading and the gospel, tells us of this wonderful miracle of repentance. A good man stop doing good and begin to do evil. That man deserves to die. And a bad man, an evil man, a wicked man, who has been perpetrating evil, who has been very wicked, committing all kinds of atrocities. And just because that man, if he decides to change and make up his mind and said, I will not do this again. I will begin to do good. I will begin to live a holy life. I will begin to live a life of holiness and faithfulness to God. The word of God says, that man shall live. Just imagine. This is somebody who was dead already. But because of this repentance, he will live. That is a miracle. Because his status has changed from death to life. All of a sudden. They didn't say it will take him 10 years to make that change. You know, that's why I call it a miracle. Because, you know, a miracle is something that can happen instantly. I choose to call it a miracle. Because, let me take for instance, there are things that you want to get in life. You need so many processes. You want to get a YX certificate. You have to put in six years in the, in, the, in the secondary school. You want to get a university degree. You have to put in four solid years with all the strikes in Nigeria. You're talking about five, six, seven years in the university just to get a certificate. But we are talking about getting a certificate to heaven in just one minute. By just making up your mind and said, like the prodigal son. I will leave this place and go back to my father. That is the miracle. That is the power embedded in this word called repentance. The gospel tells us today of two young men. The first one was told, go and walk in my vineyard. He said, I will go. He never went. The other one said, I will not go. That is what he said to the father. I am not going to hell with you. I'm not going to do it. You know, looking at such a child, you say, this is a bad child. This is a cursed child. It's a useless child. Nonsense child. That's what everybody will say. But the miracle and the power of repentance turned that second son immediately to become a good son. And the people are firm that who did the, when Jesus Christ asked them, who did the right thing? He said, it's the second son. The one who said, I will not go. And later, he went. He just made up his mind. He just changed. He just repented of what he has said before. That is what it is. That is the miracle embedded in this repentance. My dear friends, as you listen to me today, as you hear the word of God today, 
I want to let you know that miracle can still happen even in your own life. That miracle can happen even in your own situation. That miracle can happen because Christ himself has set the stage for each and every one of us. When he said at the cross of Calvary, it is finished. The stage has been set. It's left for me and you to climb that stage and make that pronouncement. It's left for me and you to change. It's left for me and you to say with all our heart, I repent. I will go and walk in that vineyard. I will become a good Christian. I will turn away from this sin that has eroded my life. Maybe it is drunkenness. Maybe the life of adultery. Maybe the life of stealing. The life of lying. I mean, you should know it. I don't need to tell you. That life that you think has kept you where you are spiritually, you can make a change today. You can make a change now. The power is in your hands. Hallelujah. The ball is in your court. You can make it happen. Amen. You can make it happen right now. The young man did not say, give me a month, give me a week. He just said, after some minutes, I am going to walk in my father's vineyard. And that was it. The wicked man did not say, okay, I, in 10 months, you know, Ezekiel did not say, the wicked man in 10 months, you know. But the man just said, he just turned from his evil ways, from his wicked ways, from his transgression, and say, I will not commit sin again. And the word of God says, that man shall live. He shall not die. He shall live eternally. If you turn from your evil ways, if you turn from a particular sin, if you turn from one particular evil or the other, you have the full opportunity to live. You have the opportunity to live. You will not die. You will live eternally. You will go to heaven. That's what the Bible is saying. Where you will live forever. Where you live in eternity. Where you enjoy the blessings of God. But the opportunity is right now. You have the opportunity right now to make that decision. It is you that will make the decision. It's not God that will make the decision for you. He didn't say that God forced the wicked man to change. No. So why are you wasting time on something you can do even right now? To say this life, this sin, enough is enough. The Lord is good. So when we as Christians live the Christian way, the way we have been called and begin to commit sin, there is no guarantee that we shall live. There is no guarantee that God will say, okay, because you were doing good. No. There is no guarantee. That's what the word of God is saying. We are like the son who said, I am going to work. Another sometime, he never went. The fact that he said I was going to work, that is words. There was no action. We are talking about action. We are talking about making a move, make a move, make a move, make a move. Do not delay. Do not waste time. Do not say tomorrow. Do not say let this month finish. Let this year finish. Procrastination. You have the power to make a move and create that miracle in your life. That is what I'm talking about. Creating the miracle by yourself. Everybody believes in miracle. Everybody longs for miracle. Everybody loves miracles. But you can create a miracle in your own life by turning from evil by turning from a particular sin the bible said there's great rejoicing in heaven when one sinner does what repents hallelujah that is the angels will be singing and dancing there will be jubilation there will be celebration because one person have repented or because you have left a particular sin or because you have said to yourself i will not do this again
when you make up your mind to repent or to change from a particular sin, there is always a tendency that the past will come back to haunt you. Like I said, don't mind what your friends may say or others will think about you. People will begin to say, look at him, look at her. He wants to be different. She wants to claim that she is now a born again. All those things will come. There are even temptations, more temptations will come to try to bring you back, to haunt you. That is why the first reading was saying that some persons who were already doing good, they turned and started doing evil. The good man started committing atrocities, became wicked. And that is why the Bible said that man shall die. So when these challenges, these setbacks begin to come to pull you back or to haunt you, you have to be stronger. You have to be better. You have to be tough. You have to know that it is forward ever, backward never. You have to know that when once the hand is placed on the plow, nobody turns back. You want to know that any man who starts building a house and is not able to finish, the onlookers will laugh at you. So you must make up your mind. God gives us the free will to choose to do good or to choose to do evil. You have the free will. Why? Because God is a patient God. He gives us that free will for a long time. Some have 20 years, some 50, some 70 years, some 80 years to make that decision. That is why the psalmist, Psalm 19, will say, Oh, that today you will listen to his voice, harden not your heart. Because you have the opportunity today, you may not have it tomorrow. The opportunity you have today, you may not have it tomorrow. The word of God you are hearing today, you may not be able to hear it tomorrow. So why not make use of this opportunity you have that you have been hearing about Christ, about his word, on the need to repent. You've been coming to church every day. You'll be sitting down every day, listening to the word of God, but you still go back to do that particular thing that the word of God said, don't. The same thing that you said on the day of your baptism, you will not do. You reject Satan, you reject sin, you reject evil, you reject wickedness. And you still find yourself in that way. Then you become like the man who said to himself, he was going to change, he was going to do good. Ended up doing evil. Reverse should be the case. We should say today, we want to turn from our evil ways and to do good. We want to turn from our wickedness to do good. We want to turn from sin to righteousness. That is where the miracle will be complete in your life. I pray for you, my dear friends, today. I pray for you, my brothers and sisters, that God will give you strength. God will give you grace. God will give you that power to turn around this miracle. God will give you the humility that St. Paul said today in his letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. The B part said, this is Jesus Christ. Though he was God, he was in the form of God. He did not cling equality with God. He humbled himself became a servant, became a slave, and God raised him on the last day. If we humble ourselves to repent, to come down low, to, to, to swallow our pride, our ego, our degrees, our riches, whatever you think you have, if you keep them down and turn from your evil way and repent in humility, because there cannot be repentance without humility. If we repent, on the last day, God will raise us up. He will raise us. Our name will be pronounced. That is why we mentioned the saints today. We remember them. Because they humbled themselves and suffered humiliation. Some were killed. Some were persecuted. But today, we talk about St. Charles, St. Peter, St. Thomas, St. Margaret, St. This, St. That. These men and women humbled themselves. They did not follow the standard of the world, but they followed the standard of Christ, who himself is humbled. And today their names are remembered. If you humble yourself, God will remember you on the last day. 
because he's a compassionate God. That is why the psalmist tells us today that remember your compassion, O Lord. He's a God of compassion. That is why last Sunday he was telling us it doesn't matter the time you came to walk in the vineyard. Some came at the first hour, some came at the sixth hour. The time doesn't matter because he is a compassionate God. Anytime you come, he will accept you. Today, he will accept you. As you are listening to the word of God today, I know you are making up your mind already. He's going to accept you. Don't be worried. Don't mind what people will say. It is what God thinks about you that matters. God sees you as a son. Do not die in shame. Do not die in pride. Like the prodigal son. He was suffering. We don't know how many years, how many months he was suffering in that place. But one day he came to his senses and said, I will go back to my father. You have the opportunity today to go back. To turn from your wicked ways. To turn from that sin. To live a good life. You have the opportunity today. You have the power today. To say, even though I said before, I will not go to the vineyard to work. But today, I want to go. Don't look back. Don't look at somebody. Don't, don't care what people will say or think about you. But what matters is that you have made a decision that will change your life forever. May God himself, who is compassionate, who listens to his children, bless you as you hear his word today. And even our brothers and sisters who are at home, who are viewing us on their various social media platform, I pray for you today that God will bless you in your decision to change from something that is evil, maybe just one thing that is evil in your life, to something that is good. And he will hear you and he will give you life, life in abundance through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for watching this Sunday homily. I believe you are blessed. Please click on the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified on subsequent videos. Subscription is free. For more motivational and spiritual messages, visit www.fathathomasonabedailydigest.com. Happy Sunday.